Welcome back to Cocktails with Kurt. This is episode 17, where our fe featured cocktail is the Singapore Sling in honor of our friend Gerda from the Netherlands who passed away yesterday. Uh, Gerda had been ailing for some time and her daughter let me know this week that the um, Singapore Sling was her favorite cocktail and we thought she might get a kick out of seeing it featured on our video. Um, but we didn't have the ingredients and needed to schedule a trip uh, to Washington, D.C. to pick them up. Um, so we hope that wherever Gerda is, she can still get a kick out of this. Um, our viewers come from a variety of faith traditions and have different views on what happens after you die. Um, but uh, I like to picture Gerda throwing back a, uh, a Singapore sling she we enjoyed many fun times with her she was a lovely woman and we'll miss her absolutely absolutely so to so the drink itself uh, the singapore sling is um, pretty simple um, it's actually a, it's a classic cocktail it's been around for 150 years plus um, the first documented mention of it that uh, could be found was in the 1880s um, the version that we're going to be using is from the 1920s to the 30s. We don't know exactly when, when it was introduced there. But it's from one of the uh, hotels in uh, Singapore that made the drink famous worldwide. So I think what everyone really wants to know right now is what ingredient did we not have? What we did not have is cherry herring. Um, it is uh, cherry liqueur um that straight the flavor profile is uh best described as cough syrup well in fairness cherry cough syrup yes true not mint it is not menthol cough syrup <laughs> but it is uh straight it's pretty cloying i would not drink it straight uh, but it's going to give some nice brightness to the cocktail itself so what else is in this cocktail uh, London Dry Gin, it's always, or as normal, we're going to be using Gordon's. Uh, we also are going to be using uh, Benedictine, which is an herbal liqueur. Uh, we've not used that in this series. Um, fresh lime. Uh, club soda. Uh, we use uh, our local Harris Teeter brand. It's cheap. It's fine. Have you done taste like side by sides with other types of club soda? I have not. Um, and I should do that just to see if there's a lot, any difference. Because there's a big difference um, among tonics. There is a huge different among, difference among tonics, um, ginger beer, etc. Any of those mixers. And for those, for those mixers, uh, my favorite brand uh, is Fever Tree. And they do make a club soda, but it's basically carbonated water. So I'm wondering how much difference carbonated water can be where this is 83 cents for a liter versus the Fever Tree club soda, which is like... Uh, More than that. Yeah, three, four bucks for a six ounce pour. Seems a little bit absurd. Indeed. And then Angostura. Our first. old standby. Our old standby. This is a long drink, which is why we have the club soda. Long drink just means that all of the ingredients are lengthened to um, make the drink a little bit bigger, make it a little bit longer to drink. It's, it's so basically it just means that you add club soda? Basically. Okay. It, it could be... Could, you, could it be another, like a, a different type of soda? Absolutely. Or, it could okay. be club soda, Coke, whatever. Okay. And they generally come in those tallish glasses there? Um, yes. So this one is built right in the glass. Most long drinks are built right in the glass. What does that mean? That means that you don't shake it or stir it or anything like that? It's going to be stirred in the glass. But, oh, okay. But it's but that's all it's going to be. All right. Don't want too much ice in that. All right. Proportions on this are very simple. It's one ounce of everything. Uh, one ounce of the first four. So gin, 
the hearing, the Benedictine, the lime, one ounce of each, two ounces of club soda, one dash of Agostura bitters. So let's talk a bit about these liqueurs then. Other than being cough syrup-like, um, what can you tell us about the cherry hearing? So it's a liqueur, so it's sweet. Mm -hmm. Where does it come from? Uh, I don't know what its origin is. Uh, Denmark. Hmm, okay. Um, and actually the recipe that I'm using calls for either cherry hearing or um, Bowles Cherry Brandy. Hmm. Um, Bowles is a common, uh, is a common maker of uh, spirits. They do a lot of the cordials. Um, and they've been around for over a hundred years as well. Um, I couldn't so, find either one locally. That was very annoying. So this is Benedictine. This is Benedictine. I believe this is a French liqueur. Yeah. What's the flavor profile on this? This one is sweet and, and um, herbal is the best way to describe it. This one actually you can drink straight. I, like I said, I wouldn't do the cherry hearing straight. But this one I absolutely would. Um, not all the time. It's very straight and I would probably want to drink it over ice. To it's very straight. You mean very sweet? Very sweet. Yes, yeah. I'm okay. sorry. Very sweet. Um, I wouldn't want. I would if I was going to drink it straight. I would drink it over ice. Um, but most of the time, that's just not the uh, the mood that I'm in. Lime juice. Lime juice. So these were equal parts, you say? Yep. What is what is it? An ounce or what? One ounce of each. Okay. All right, so now it gets a little bit of a mix. And then two ounces of club soda. This just goes right on top. So you're not going to stir that up. I'm not going to stir that up. At so least you... not at serving time. Oh, okay. So is the person who's drinking it supposed to do that? I, that kind of makes sense. It does, and but sometimes you don't want it to. You don't want to stir it anyway because that's part of the characteristic of the drink is getting what's underneath through the club soda. Ah, I see. And it's the same reason why I'm not going to stir with the Angostura bitters. One dash, one dash, and this is the Singapore Sling. To Gerda. To Gerda. See you next time.